So one of the main features of a Makaira hull is the fact that we have a non-developable hull bottom. And what that means is our hull sheets, when we put them on the hull, don't actually form a hull shape without manipulating them. So you can see here, this hull is up on this big jig and this steel jig that you can see all the frames are attached to is about three ton and it's really strong. What that allows us to do is when we put the hull bottom on the top, we can manipulate the hull sheets in. So you can see behind me here on this 35, the hull actually has a lot of warp in it. So when we put our hull sheets on, there'll be a large gap here between the hull, hull plate and the frame and we pull that in. So in the front end of our boat, there'd be at least eight ton of force in the hull bottom to get the hull bottom to pull in. When we, when we pull the hull bottom in, we fully weld off all the frames and chain stitch the stringers and that stress relieves it. So that's where our hull jig is really important. We wouldn't be able to produce our hull shape like we do without building it on a really big heavy steel jig like this. The jig is what holds the boat while it's being manipulated and welded and then as the aluminium cools after welding it's maintained on this jig and it relaxes into that position. So there's no tension remaining in the hull bottom but it allows us to produce a non-developable hull shape and that's a hull shape that would be common in a fiberglass boat but for aluminium builders they typically build their hulls on the floor and they just put two hull sheets on the floor and whatever the hull the aluminium naturally produces shape wise uh, is the hull shape and that's called a developable hull shape ours is a non-developable hull shape so now we've got the hull plates on this boat you can really see the amount of warp and barrel that we have to manipulate into the hull bottom so you can see here that the hull shape is basically tacked onto the keel and we've got at frame three we've got a foot of barrel and uh, warp that we're going to put into the hull so how you would normally build a hull would be that shape our hull on frame one is two feet of barrel put into the into the hull bottom and warp um, so there's a lot of tension in this that's why most builders don't do it because if you're building a hull on the floor with two flat sheets that just get folded up at the front uh, like most monohedron hull shapes the amount of force you need to do that you can do it with pretty much some 200 kilo ratchet straps so you can see how much force we uh, we exert into the hull that all takes time so this hull here at a 35 footer takes about 200 hours just to get off the jig uh, a comparative boat if you're doing a monohedron hull shape would probably be 50 uh, so that really shows the amount of work we put in and the value that you're getting when you buy one of our boats so the reason this is really important is because you can imagine if that was your hull shape there we'd only have maybe 20 24 degrees of dead rise in the forward section of the boat and that's where you're taking the impacts because we're manipulating these hull sheets and pulling them in you know on frame one like i said about two feet 600 mil in that gives you a dead rise which is more like 50 55 degrees and so through this section of the boat which is the working area of the hull where you're taking most impacts it's important that you have a sharper dead rise in at the transom but with a monohedron hull shape you don't actually get any variation of dead rise. With our hulls and how we warp the hull bottom, you get a huge amount of variation from the transom at 18 to up to over 50 in the bow. Okay, so you can see here now this boat's further down the production line, we've got it right way up, and you can really see, looking at this angle, the amount of warp and barrel in the hull. So the transom's 18 degrees, that gives us a really good planing efficiency. You don't use a lot of fuel, easy to get on plane, you can get on plane at a lower speed. But then in the bow here, we're over 50 degrees. Uh, so the working area of the boat is station four forward. Um, so that's basically where you're standing at the dash. And we've got a variable dead rise. So we're not just 21 degrees right the way through folding up at the front. We've got uh, over 30 degrees through that working area of the hull up to over 50 in the, in the very bow when you're cutting into a chop. So that's what really gives our boats a soft ride. Uh, and it's actually quite hard to do in an aluminium boat. The other thing that's really important that we have in our hulls is the amount of barrel. 
So if you look here, you can see that there's a large amount of barrel in this hull bottom and that barrel creates a softness of ride because instead of hitting a wave with a flat bottom boat uh, that's a developable hull shape where you get a slapping impact the the curve in the hull bottom creates a surface that squishes the water out there's no potential for the boat to impact a wave and all of the energy of the wave hit with a flat bottom it squishes the water out with the curvature in the hull bottom one of the main points of difference of our hulls is our Carolina flare. So you can see this hull here behind me is a 33 and it's got a large amount of flare in the top side. Uh, we're the only builder in the world that does that in a plate alloy hull. So our, our top side is 5mm, uh, our hull bottoms are 8 And basically what this does is it creates a really dry ride. It allows us to run a, a narrower entry on our hulls and not sacrifice the following sea performance. So the flare has increasing amount of buoyancy as you bury the bow into a back of a wave in a following sea or into a trough. So as you enter more bow enters the water, it creates more lift, which is really important for a dry and stable ride. So I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough about Makara hulls and why they're different to the rest of the industry. If you want any more info on our boats or our hull shapes, reach out to sales at makaraboats.com or you can get in contact with me, alan at makaraboats.com.